Hi guys, welcome to the chat. I I'm so sorry that I have you guys waiting. I actually was in a session and I'm just now ending it. So my mind is going to be a little jumbled up. <laughs> um, I didn't, I don't even think I took two minutes to just kind of deep breathe and then get into this, this live chat, but I see you guys commenting and I'm so glad to always see you talking and, and communicating with each other while I tried to, to get onto this, uh, this platform. So thank you so much for that. Let me just go back and make sure that I'm acknowledging all of you. So I see, whoops, so sorry guys, that was my microphone. I see, I don't know why I'm not able to see this whole thing. Hold on guys. I see Cherry's Jubilee. Hello, Cherry Jubilee. Welcome to the chat. I also see blessed in every area of my life. Welcome to the chat. Hello. I also see it's been cold lately. Hello. Welcome to the chat. I see you say that you're looking forward to this. I'm glad to hear that. I also see Deb. Hello, Deb. Mel Kep. Sean Hammer. Welcome to the chat. Glad to see you as well. And there's one up here, but I don't know why I can't see your your screen name. This is so weird. It is, I don't even know. I, I can't even, I can't even welcome you because YouTube's not letting me see your screen name for some weird reason, but welcome to the chat guys. We're going to just jump on in. Okay. And, uh, I want to make sure that I make this video short, sweet, but also comprehensive. You know, um, I also see you and a hello. Welcome to the chat. Glad to have you. Hello, fairy girl. Welcome to the chat. Um, y'all's Precious Jewel, hello, welcome. Citizen King, hello, welcome. Jacob Taylor, welcome to the chat as well. My God, I'm so glad to see all of you. Chris Olson, hello, welcome to the chat as well. So let's just jump in, okay? This is a topic that has garnered, you know, a lot of criticism, a lot of anger, mixed emotions, the list go goes on. Anytime I talk about unintentional abuse, let me tell you, I get hit with so many different things. One person, half cut me out and, <laughs> and said that there's no such thing as unintentional abuse and no therapist should ever talk about it. Then years ago, I had somebody say, you know, I shouldn't even touch this topic because everybody who abuses does it on purpose. I mean, I can give you a whole lot of examples of, of just the animosity that is behind this topic. And I get it. I do. Um, but I think the most important part to keep in mind as we move along is that this does not specifically involve involve you as the parent, right? This is about you as the adult child to a parent like this. And there's a ton of research that suggests that unintentional unintentional abuse, whether it's labeled that or not, does exist. There are parents who do things. And they do them unintentionally. I, I think the the whole social mindset of the word abuse is that it's cold, it's cruel, and it's intentional. The reality is that not every abuse that happens is intentional. There are some situations, and it's probably a small percentage, that involves abuse, but it's not done viciously. It's not done intentionally to cause so, so much harm. Now, an example of this kind of abuse may be something like, you know, let's say you have a mom who was, you know, pregnant by the age of 15. She was abused. She was neglected. She didn't have a lot of education. Um, she was a substance abuser, right? We could just, you know, we can just throw all those demographics at this, this teenage parent. You come into the world, right? When this teenage parent turns 16 years old, what does a 16 year old do with a baby, right? Well, they have to lean on their parents, lean on other adults in their lives. And the reality of that dynamic is that the mother is growing up right alongside the baby, right? And what happens in a situation like that? Sometimes it, it goes very well. Other times, not so much. In, in the case of unintentional abuse, this kind of a scenario, is horrific, right? Because this 16 year old has a long life to live and she or he is going to want to do things in life. And that means you're going to have to be left behind. That also means that this mother is going to have to work around the clock to provide most likely, right? So maybe their emotional connection to you is going to be cut off because they have to provide. They now have to be the adult. 
or maybe they're going to work so hard and so much that you only know your grandparents. You don't know your mother, right? So that's emotional neglect. It's emotional abuse. You may also get a 16-year-old who has anger issues, undiagnosed bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, you know, anger problems, the list goes on. This adolescent may also have a history of suicidal thoughts, right, that haven't even gotten worked out. And maybe there's some intergenerational trauma to throw on top of that, right? And so what's going to happen to you as this infant? You're, you're most likely going to be kind of you know, toss to the grandparents, right? Or to babysitters or extended family, or maybe even put into the foster care system. But is this really intentional, right? Yes, a 16 year old, you know, engages in behaviors that leads to pregnancy, but does that mean that because they don't have the skills, they don't know what they're doing because they are very, um, uneducated to life themselves in a lot of ways, right? What does a 16-year-old know about life, right? So because of that, they're going to engage in behaviors that's most likely close, if not 100%, the category of emotional abuse, psychological abuse, and maybe physical abuse as well. That's where, you know, most parents end up going wrong. They lack education. So you may be asking yourself, well, what is this un unintentional abuse? Because I don't see this a lot on social media. I don't see it in the book for therapists, the DSM. So what is this thing? Well, it's, it's more of a psychological concept and a term. It's an umbrella term for basically the example that I just provided to you. It's a parent that doesn't have the skills, the capabilities, the self-awareness, the maturity, right? Emotionally detached and unavailable parents can also be in this category. Narcissistic and sociopathic parents can also be in this category. Now, are there some narcissistic and sociopathic parents who do abuse intentionally? 100%. But are there some narcissistic parents that unintentionally abuse their children? Yes. Maybe they're always fighting with their boyfriend. Maybe they think they're too cute to be this lovey-dovey, hardworking mother, right? Those are all considered unintentional intentional ways that, that a child can end up abused. Now, the definition of unintentional abuse would be a well-meaning, loving parent that's ill-equipped, immature, or too young. That's the definition. Let me go back over that. It's, it's, it's a well-meaning, loving, but ill-equipped, emotionally immature, inadequate, I'm going to add that in there, and maybe too young of a parent. That's what unintentional abuse is. That sums it up. It's a parent who maybe could really love you, but they don't know how. It's, it's a parent who maybe loved you, but then thought corporal punishment or severe abuse would get you to listen better, right? That's so hard to swallow, right, guys? Because it's like, well, you know, you're, you're, you've spanked me as a child. You've You've hit me as a child. You've you've humiliated me as a child. How couldn't you have done that on purpose? And, you know, unfortunately, there's that small percentage of parents that may pause and say, I just didn't know what else to do or I didn't know any better. Right. And so things get complicated. All right, guys, I'm going to go to the chat box. I need some water. I'm going to go because I see you guys commenting. I don't think I've ever seen my comment box flip up and down so many times. So let me just excuse me for that. Let me just go back and see some of this. Okay. Um, because you know, this is a tough topic. So I want to see what you guys are saying and kind of get your view on all of this. Oh, oh my God. My light just went out. Hold on. <laughs> Seriously. Now, how does that happen guys? Every YouTube chat, there's something that, that there's something that goes on live. I don't know why this happens, but it does. Um, oh, okay. Citizen King says, Hey, uh, uh, Hey Tamara, we'll save you a t-shirt from tomorrow. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me just kind of throw this in here briefly. Um, uh, Citizen King, I don't know if he wants me to mention his name or not, but he has a, a summit coming up tomorrow and I'm supposed to be, uh, in a live, uh, zoom appearance where I'm going to be talking about suicide and, um, really understanding it from different perspectives and really trying to, uh, identify it before someone actually engages in that. So I'll be posting some information on my channel here just so that you could see what we're doing at the summit tomorrow. Um, okay. So let me go back to... 
Okay, Empowered Woman, hello, welcome to the chat, glad to see you. Hello, Anibis, the opener of Ways. Oh, welcome to the chat, glad to see you as well. Um, okay, let me just go over some of these comments. Uh, uh, Yas Precious Joel says, is that why most say, uh, most say they did the best they can when you bring up the damage that they have caused. I think so. But let me just kind of, let me tease that apart a little bit. So there's those parents who, you know, did abuse you. There's those parents who are manipulative. There's those parents who are harmful. And they justify that harmful behavior by saying, I did the best that I could, right? Um, okay, but sometimes your best just isn't enough, right? And so you need to take that responsibility and be that parent and say, I messed up. Like, I, I didn't realize that me beating you or, or fighting you or, you know, uh, embarrassing you or making you do certain things was harmful to you. I just didn't know, right? And maybe there's a well-meaning parent behind that. But, you know, I also, I, I just really and honestly think that there are some parents over here in this category who are abusive and neglectful and angry and, you know, they're volatile and they're hostile and they take their anger out on their children. And then when the children get older and call them out on it, they say, I did the best I could. That's just not enough. But then there's also some parents who are that way and they just didn't know any better, right? They loved you. They'll do anything for you. They just didn't know any better. And so if you separate it like that, y'all's precious Joel, I think it'll be a little bit easier to kind of conceptualize because we don't want to let go uh, or let off the hook those parents who are abusive and hostile and angry and they're just making up these excuses, right? But we want to be sensitive to those parents over here in this category who just didn't simply know what the heck they were doing, right? But they love you. They'll do anything for you. So uh, sometimes that's hard to tease apart. It just is. I wish it weren't. Miracle, miracle. Hello. Welcome to the chat. Glad to see you. Says, my mom was 28 when she had me, but it was still emotional incestuous. Oh, well, absolutely. And and coming up on Sunday, I'm going to be breaking down the differences between emotional incest, emotional extortion, and the dark empath. So stay tuned for that, because you're going to probably find your parents somewhere along that continuum. But but I think that there are some parents who do love you, and they, they are connected to you, and maybe they are sorry, but they just didn't understand that they're leaning on you emotionally and psychologically was a lot for you to be up under. How do you heal from a dynamic like that? That's a whole new live chat. That's a whole new live chat. And that's coming up next week. So I won't say anymore. Deb says, I see how much my daughter has suffered since her concussion. Okay, we're talking about we're talking about something with Cherry's Jubilee. I'm going to skip that, Deb. All right, I'm going to keep going. Oh, boy. I hit the wrong button every time. I just do. It never fails. Auntie Lou, hello. Welcome to the chat. I haven't seen you in so long. Glad to see you on here. Says, born to two teen parents. Sometimes I wonder why me? I am a sensitive, introverted, creative. I don't understand why I had to grow up in a dysfunctional environment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a really big existential question. And what I mean by existential is, it's, it's why does it have to be being that's been born into a dysfunctional family system is really a spiritual, uh, philosophical, and edu as if I can speak, existential question that really requires a, a spiritual answer, right? Because we have no concrete, uh, you know, explanation as to why you have to grow up in a dysfunctional dynamic like this, but we can turn it and we can look at it from different perspectives. And I'll bring that to you next week, Auntie Lou. So come back next week. But but I think having two teenage parents is a recipe for disaster. And it really just depends on the emotional maturity of those adolescent, those, you know, adolescent parents. If you have two 14 year olds who are expecting a baby, more than likely there is going to be some unintentional abuse. I had a 16 year old in my office a year ago, just had a baby, love that baby. You could see it when she hugged him, when she kissed his little sweet little chubby cheeks, you know, she was a great mother in the moment. But when it came to providing and raising and teaching and loving in the midst of teaching and, and, and raising, it was all too much for her. And so she was my case of unintentional abuse because she would sleep and sleep and sleep for hours and the baby would cry and be unattended to for hours. And it was just, <clears throat> it was just a horrific 
kind of a mother son dynamic, you know? All right, let's keep going. Hmm. Blessed in every area of my life says my mother hates me because my father didn't want her. Wow. Yeah, that's like some transference or something going on there. For those of you who don't know what that is, transference is the idea that something has happened to you in the past. And so sometimes you can see some traits or you could see some remnants of your past in the current situation and it causes you to act a certain way towards the situation. So uh, blessed in every area of my life. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. Maybe there's some transference there. Chris Olson says, only one of my parents was a teen. Yeah. And sometimes if you have uh, only one parent who's a teen and you don't know the father or the father, you know, isn't involved, that could be a little better sometimes. And I'll explain why in a minute here. But for the most part, teenage parents, they can be loving. They can be wonderful. They could be the best parents in the world. But when it comes to raising a child and, and parenting, and what I mean by parenting is building a safe environment, having financial stability, being mature enough to deal with the issues of life, raising a child is the most difficult thing to do when you're an adolescent. And so unintentional abuse happens there. Let me also mention too, guys, that unintentional abuse also happens if your parent has uh, undetected or poorly treated mental health or mental illness concerns, meaning that maybe they have really bad, you know, uh, episodes of anger, depression, mania, where they are just out of control. They don't stay on their medication. Uh, they become suicidal. They gamble all the money away. Lights have been turned out in their home. There's no food in the refrigerator, right? So that's kind of an example of a of an adult who may unintentionally abuse. It is their responsibility to be a parent, but can they still unintentionally abuse you because they have an untreated or poorly treated mental health issue? Absolutely. Absolutely. They may love you with all of their heart, but just not have the ability to raise you. All right. I'm going to keep going, guys. Let's get back to the content, okay? Excuse me. I don't know why I'm so thirsty today. Now, let me just say that if you have a parent who has unintentionally abused you and you are now an adult, right? What can that do to you? Well, it's going to make trusting other people really difficult. It's going to make, you know, being mature in your own life really difficult, right? Because more than likely, that abuse that you've endured, that traumatic parent-child relationship that you have endured has probably gotten in the way of you having a normal, healthy, stable, well-rounded childhood. And so what did you have to do, right? You had to grow up. Let's say there's some emotional incest in this relationship with your parent where you've had to, you know, kind of take the role of a parent or you've had to grow up because your parent didn't realize that every single thing they did was abusive to you, right? So I'm going to give you a few things to think about here. So, you know, let's look at unintentional abuse from the lens of poor communication, poor communication between you and your parents, right? And it can continue even into your adulthood. So let me explain what I mean by poor communication. When, when you have a parent that's not ready to raise a child, you have a parent that's not ready to be dedicated, there is often poor communication, whether that's in quality or quantity. Quantity means maybe you didn't get the kind of parent who talks to you, supports you verbally, knows how to tell you what you need to hear, knows how to encourage your heart when it needs it, knows how to give you the advice, the suggestions, the moral support, whatever, when you needed it, right? So the quantity of communication is lacking. The quality of communication is also lacking with these kind of parents who unintentionally abuse, right? They're not meaning to do it. They are ill-equipped. They are inexperienced. They are immature. They have mental health issues that are unresolved. They have trauma that's unresolved, whatever the issue is, right? They're well-meaning, but they really do destroy because they don't see themselves, right? So the quality of their communication may be gone. The quantity is gone and the quality. The quality of the communication is this. I'm a mature parent. I'm a mature mother. I know what to tell my child. I've talked to my child over the years. We get each other. We're bonded. We click, right? So the quality of that communication is 
poor. Another way that you want to think about a parent like this is unresolved intergenerational trauma. If you have a parent that, you know, has just been the, the product of years and years of domestic violence, years and years of drug abuse, years upon years of untreated mental illness, homelessness, racism, prejudice, discrimination, marginalization, we could just go on, right? If you have a parent that's been subjected to this throughout many generations, their family line throughout many generations, un unintentional abuse is likely to happen. One reason why is because this parent is the product of a bad, fragmented family. It's a fractured family dynamic. That's what I'm going to call it. And because of that, this parent doesn't have the example, the modeling, the experience to be a better parent, right? Now, some of you may be thinking, yeah, but what about those parents who came from abusive homes, came from traumatic situations, and yet they're still good parents. Well, they're the exception. My mom's the exception. My mom's a fantastic mom. Like I wouldn't be where I am talking to you if I didn't have my mom. So she's my one and all. The issue here is my mom didn't come from that though. My mom, who we love my grandmother dearly and she loves her mom dearly, but here's the issue. My grandmother struggled with alcoholism for many, many years. She struggled with un, you know, unresolved trauma I think she was severely depressed at certain points in her life, highly anxious, and she was a parentified child. She had to take care of her brothers most of the time. So my my grandmother did not provide, you know, at certain points in her life as a mother to my mom, she didn't provide stability. But was she still a mother when she needed to be? Yes. Did she love me? Yes. She loved my brother. She loved us all. Would I say my mom experienced some unintentional abuse? 100%. There's no doubt about it a loving mother, a loving grandmother, but was completely ill-equipped to be a mom. But when it's all said and done, you're still loved. So you kind of want to think of that, right? So generations of unintentional abuse can be the result or the cause of, or maybe I should say the result of, years and years of, of intergenerational trauma that just hasn't been addressed, right? There's nobody to model after as well in a family that's just broken, you know? So you, you, you kind of be the parent that you think is okay. Right. So, um, the next thing that you guys want to think about is, is this, this, this inappropriate absence of emotion. There is some callousness that is sometimes in a parent who doesn't know how to be a parent. Right. And you may have a parent like this. Maybe they want to be buddy, buddy with you. They want to be on the same level as you, right? Maybe they're going to go to the club and party with you. Maybe you guys are going to go on a double date, right? That's not a parent. This, this is like this, and it shouldn't be. This should be the parent, and this should be you. There should be some mutual respect, but there should be a hierarchy, you know? And there isn't. And if there isn't, right, that's an issue. That's that can turn into unintentional abuse, right? Because the parent doesn't know how to rise above and be the parent to support you. All they know is that you guys are equal. And so there's an inappropriate absence of emotional connection. There may also be a negative and irritable affect and mood. So parents who are not really happy about being parents they know they have a responsibility, but they can't really do it because they're ill-equipped. They may appear, which is your affect, they may appear negative, depressed, uninvolved, you know, not very motivated. And their mood may be very angry, hostile, volatile, right? Maybe they don't mean to be abusive at all times, but they are. And it's because they're not happy to be a parent. They are ill-equipped. Um, let me also, before I go back to the chat box, mentioned that reconciliation with these kind of parents can be difficult because most parents who unintentionally abuse their children, even their adult children, struggle with maturity. They're just not ready. And so, you know, reconciliation is really difficult. Let's say you walked away and you're kind of estranged. You've created your own world, your own bubble, and somehow you want to connect with your parent again. That's going to be a little bit difficult, especially especially if they haven't had therapy or something to help them kind of exercise their, their parental muscle, right? So they're still sitting there, still confused, still uninvolved, still just not really with it, right? And there you are. And so reconciliation can be really difficult with these kind of parents as well. They're just not ready. They're immature. They're just not there. All right. So I'm going to get some water. 
And I'm also going to read these, these comments. All right, give me one second, guys. Okay. Sean Hammer says, it got worse when I brought up how I felt about growing up. I'm now 56. Oh, my goodness. So, okay, I think I missed a part of that earlier. But um, let me kind of piggyback off that, Sean Hammer, that sometimes if you bring up to an emotionally detached parent or a parent who's just ill-equipped how you feel and how you have felt growing up, that's a recipe for disaster. Because most parents who unintentionally abuse their kids or they're not ready to be parents or they're emotionally immature, they don't have what it is that they need to give you the response that you need, right? So, so you're kind of, you may be, I shouldn't say you are, but you may be suffering on the inside and you want to tell that parent, this is what you've done to me. Don't, don't expect a sophisticated heartfelt reply because these kind of parents are really checked out. They don't, they don't have the ability to, to even, to even process like a parent would process that. If, if I had a child, which I don't yet, if I had a child and, and that child came to me and said, mom, you really abused me growing up. Like I felt so inadequate. I felt unloved. I felt in, invisible. I felt unworthy, right? My motherly reaction to that would be number one, to break down in tears because that's not really what I want for you. Number two, I'm going to want to come to you and console you and support you and say, it's okay. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry, right? A parent who is emotionally immature, they're emotionally detached, and they're just kind of aloof. They're kind of checked out. You know, they may verbalize some things to you. I'm sorry that happened. Or they may verbalize that's not, you know, anything I wanted to happen. But you know inside of your heart, right, that mm -mm, they're not connecting to me. I'm not feeling that you understand me. So, uh, Sean Hammer. It doesn't surprise me that you didn't get a real response back. And let me say for the rest of you that, that this video may uh, uh, relate to, or you may relate to this video, that you shouldn't expect an even better response from your parent either, unfortunately. Um, ooh, I hate when this jumps. I'm going to show you guys one day how behind the scenes works. It's so very annoying. Hello. Uh, I think it's... Tavon Fortney, hello, welcome to the chat. Glad to see you. I don't remember seeing you, so welcome to the chat. Um, Doritos Locos Tacos, <laughs> I think I got that right. Hello, welcome to the chat. Glad to see you. Says, what kind of issue can it cause a person who has one narcissistic parent and one emotional incestuous parent? Well, I mean, it's going to cause some attachment issues, right? Some trust issues. It's probably going to, you know, create some uh, feelings of inadequacy within you, right? So low self-esteem. And one of the really big ones uh, would be you could become really emotionally dependent on other people, right? Because you had a parent who, you know, had you could categorize, excuse me, you could categorize things as uh, emotional incest with one parent and the other parent is just a cold hearted, self-centered narcissist. I mean, you've got this parent leaning on you here and you've got that parent pulling away because all they want to do is look good in the world. Right. So have, being stuck between two parents like that, having two parents like that is only just going to keep you confused on the inside. It's going to keep you needy. You're going to have some attachment issues and you most likely will try to find love somewhere else in the world. If, if, if you're not getting the help that you need, you know? All right. So Citizen King says, both my parents would guilt me into putting up with my mother uh, in, in, inordinately? Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay. Both my parents would guilt, guilt me into putting up with my mother inordinately leaning on me. Yeah, I think there are some family members who feel like, hey, just deal with your parent. Everything will be okay. They're your parent. Uh, you know, the Bible says, oh God, I had a parent uh, two weeks ago say, the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. This is a case where there's tons of abuse. So that's not even okay to say. But you may get some people within your family to make statements like that, Citizen King. And it's just, it's too much to bear because you know your parent, right? All right, let me keep going, guys. I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose where I'm at. 
Uh, Y'all's precious jewel says, I definitely have trust issues. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have trust issues. Part of that is because I'm a therapist. But the other part of that, uh, I think for most human beings is we, we're learning uh, in our lives in today's world that you can't really trust, right? So having a parent who is abusive, uh, you know, uh, there's some emotional incest there. And then you've got the world on top of that that causes you not to trust anybody. I mean, you can have trust issues out the wall zoo, right? Um, and unfortunately, with a parent who's unintentionally abusive, it can also get that way as well. You just don't trust people. You can't, you know? All right. Let me make sure I'm getting all of you. Hold on, guys. I have to. Chris Olson says, my dad broke me. He had my mom join in, but she objected when I began to break. And he said something about bringing me to a place of tears to, like, reprogram me. Hmm. So I can pull from that, Chris. It sounds like your dad thought he was a therapist in the moment and figured, I'm just going to break you and cause you to cry and boom, you're going to change. Maybe something will maybe something will shift in you or be a little bit different when in all actuality, maybe he just caused more resentment. I don't know. Empowered Woman says, I loved working with young single mothers who were struggling to care for their child with little or no family support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I did not do that. I was actually, uh, years ago, I worked in a, a homeless shelter where I took care of the little sweet little babies uh, while I was doing an internship uh, as a graduate student. Um, and I love taking care of the little sweet little muffins. Um, but I also think Empowered Woman, it's, it's very uh, empowering to be in your position, right? Because you're taking care of women who need to be mothers and they don't have the tools to really be mothers. So to me, that's the real place of, of meaning. That's the way I'll, I'll put that. Auntie Lou says, my mom brushed off my father's abuse. I'm dealing with resentment with that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a parent can unintentionally abuse in that way as well. They can be so entwined or interconnected with their husband or their wife that they say, your dad didn't mean anything by that, or he's just trying to help you, or He's just trying to like, you know, uh, make sure that you grow up right in the world when the reality is that's not what's happening. He's abusing me. Right. So sometimes a, a mother can unintentionally abuse in that way, just trying to stand up for the father after the father has done something wrong. This is just not OK. But some parents will play that role and that could really fall into the category of unintentional abuse. They are well-meaning, but they also want to protect their husband and protect you and protect the relationship between you and your father in that scenario. So I don't know if we would categorize Michael Jackson's family as kind of being in that dynamic that, you know, dad was doing some really weird things and yet mom probably knew it was going on, but she didn't act. Do you consider, do you consider that intentional or unintentional? I mean, that's a hard one. I mean, let me know in the chat box how you kind of see that. Um, let's get back to the content. All right, guys, we, we left off at reconciliation, which is really difficult. Um, so I think the next one, I'm going to need more water. I'm so sorry. Give me one second. I think the next one needs to be being aware of the fact that a parent who is unintentionally abusive, they can't give you what they themselves don't have. It's only when you can come to that realization that things are going to be a little bit better for you. It's when you're hoping that that parent can give you something is when everything collapses, right? Because there are some adult children who look back and say, okay, mom didn't really mean anything by what happened. I still loved my mom. I'm going to go have a positive and healthy relationship with her. And the reality of that is she may still be the same rejecting, emotionally immature, self-centered, self-centered, egocentric parent that she was when you were a child. There may not be a shift in her, right? So you have to keep in mind that with parents like this, who are this way, they can't give you what they don't have. Now, can they develop it over the years and be a better adult parent to you as an adult child? Maybe, but, but what are the chances of that, right? So the percentage is probably low in that way. You also want to consider that these, these parents who unintentionally abuse because they are ill-equipped, they can sometimes be rather aloof, right? 
they just don't connect the dots very well. And they're just kind of like up in the clouds doing other things and paying attention to other things, you know, um, as opposed to really getting to the business of being a parent to you. So they can be very aloof. They can also be egocentric, right? Self-centered um, and very, very emotionally and psychologically immature. The other thing is th there's like this, this, this unconscious uh, reparenting of you as an adult. So sometimes a parent who is absent, emotionally immature, egocentric, whatever, they're, they're unintentionally causing abuse and neglect in your world. They will kind of scratch the past and the childhood that you've had, and they will try to be a better parent. So they're going to try to reparent you while you are an adult. And sometimes that can be a really rough process because you still haven't forgotten that, that, that pain that you carried over the years, right? That childhood trauma, because this parent couldn't be a parent to you. Um, let me also uh, uh, mention before we get ready to, to wrap this up, guys, that sometimes parents can unintentionally abuse when they are psychotic, when they have, uh, you know, illnesses that creates a separation between reality and falsehood. So delusions, right? These, these really strong false beliefs. Uh, the FBI is following me. Someone's watching me through my computer screen. There's someone in the vent, right? There's, you know, whatever, right? A delusion, which is a, it's, it's a false belief held to be true, despite concrete evidence to the contrary. And so those kind of parents can emotionally abuse as well. Imagine growing up in a house with a delusional parent. You most likely have experienced things that are frightening, confusing, uh, deterring, disturbing, the list goes on, right? So, so all of that can be an environment of abuse, but they don't mean to do it. They're just not well. A parent who also hears and sees things that are not there hallucinations and they struggle and they can't decipher between falsehood or fiction and truth or reality, they can also unintentionally abuse because they don't know how to manage their illness, right? Which can kind of put you growing up over the years in jeopardy of being hurt, deceived, disappointed, the list goes on. Uh, let's also not forget drug and alcohol abuse can also cause unintentional abuse. You may have a, a parent who truly loves you, but they are they are gripped in the claws of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, right? And sometimes even post-traumatic stress disorder. That could be an illness that is really hard to kick, really hard to heal, really hard to control. And so growing up with somebody with 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 poorly treated or untreated PTSD can also cause an environment where there is abuse and neglect. It's unintentional, but nonetheless it's still disturbing. All right, we're going to pause there, guys, because I'm coming up uh, with a video on Sunday that's going to kind of help tie up the loose ends in this live chat, okay? Let me make sure I get to your comments, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, okay, so y'all's precious jewel says, I remember my mom saying um, to her mom, uh, hold on, I, re I remember my mom saying her mom and her had a wonderful relationship, but she was sent to live with my great grandma until she passed. And she told me how my grandparents pulled guns and knives on each other. Ooh, my Lord. And you, you know, you almost want to ask y'all's precious jewel. You almost want to ask like, what's going on in that dynamic? Is that undetected? Like trauma? What is that going on there? You know, um, that's really hard to, to process. Alyssa Peluso, how, how, I hope I said that right. Right. Hello. Welcome to the chat. I need to go home. Uh, she says, accepting new patients. Oh, I wish I were. I just took my last one uh, last week. So I'm pushing like 62 people a week. But, but feel free to email me and I might be able to like maneuver my schedule if needed. Um, Alyssa says, dangerous psychotic behaviors, transgenerational trauma, shared psychosis. I'm struggling to speak up in courtroom as a victim and for custody of our sons, three and one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I guess you're saying that there may be some unintentional abuse here. Um, let me read your other comment. You say, it's been a rough road and extremely hard to find a therapist knowing depths of these subjects as you. All court cases coming to an end this month. Please let me know how to contact you. Um, you can email me, but I, you know, so I always put it out here that unfortunately 
it's not easy to reach out to an outside therapist and say, hey, help me understand this case um, or, or please give me some insights or some advice because we don't have the full case in front of us. Right. So we're kind of blindsided. So the best that I could do, feel free to email me. My email is in the description box below. The best that I could do is maybe give you some insights, some pointers, um, and then hopefully that'll give you some peace of mind moving forward. Um, okay. Let me keep going, guys. Um, ooh, fairy girl. Hold on. Oh, my Lord. These are, I'm so behind. Um, all right. I'll come back to you, fairy girl. Siobhan Fortney says, I'm hoping for reconciliation with my dad, but my dad isn't mature and lives in denial. Denial land. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I'm tr trying how to heal myself without the validation I need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to post in the description box below a video that I did on reparenting yourself, but I'm also going to come up with that next live chat um, or the live chat after that. We'll see where I'm kind of feeling we need to go. But reparenting yourself is important, right? When you have a parent like this, if you have a parent that's somewhere in la la land, right? They're aloof, they're in denial. You're not going to get anywhere with this kind of parent because they can't feel and they can't process what they've done to you. So, you know, it's, it's like you're just screaming and yelling at a wall, but there's nobody there. You know, it's really painful. Y'all's precious jewel says, my parents don't ever consider my feelings. It's like talking to a brick wall. It seems intentional to me. They are quick to call others out for disrespecting them, but don't respect me. That's a good point. Now, let me highlight that there are some parents like that. And you have to ask yourself, is this a narcissistic parent? Is this an emotionally immature parent? Is this a cold, callous parent? Or is this a defense mechanism, right? Are you putting up that brick wall? Because you don't want to, you don't want to accept what it is that you've done to me, right? So you really have to gamble with those, figure out what is this? Is this emotionally immature? Is this narcissistic and self-centered, egocentric, right? Or is this a defense mechanism? Like, what is this that's sitting in front of me? And, and that's kind of what you want to ask yourself, you know? Um, and then over time, accept the reality that you may never have the kind of parents that you want. Um, and that's a really sad reality, but it's a, it's a reality, right? And so that takes years and years of, of acceptance. So um, I will be bringing that kind of a topic back to the channel. Okay. Let me keep going, guys. I love how you guys are um, supporting each other. Hi, Diversity Love. I just saw you in there. Welcome to the chat. Glad to see you. I'm signing off, but welcome. Um, oh, yes, Mel Cap, you too. Have a great night. Thanks for coming. Every single chat, you guys are there. So I love it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Melissa. Yep, go ahead. You can email me. Totally fine. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, Cherry Jubilee, for that sweetness. I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, Doritos Locos Taco says, I need to reparent myself because both of them were bad parents. Oh my God, yeah. How do you tell, how do you tell parents that you were really bad parents? Right. How do you tell a parent that? Um, and so, you know, that that takes a lot of bravery on your part, but it also takes a lot of self-exploration within yourself as well to determine were they an intentional bad parent or were they just a bad parent because they were ill-equipped, Ill like they didn't know what they were doing. And so, you know, that's that's the fork in the road. Do I forgive them or do I hold this grudge because they were bad parents? And how do I how do I deal with all this confusion? Right. That's, that's hard. That's hard. Um, Doritos Locos Tacos says, where's that book? You mean my book? Um, Deb says, I bought it on Amazon. <laughs> okay. If you're talking about my book, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. It could be in your local grocery store, your local Walmart, your local Target, the list goes on. Um, but I will post, if you're talking about my book, I'll post the link in the description box below for you guys. Um, interestingly, it's been selling really, really good overseas. I don't know why it's it's like selling extraordinarily well in Canada. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody over in Canada needs that book. Um, someone says, uh, Siobhan Fortney says, I don't see her email. Yeah, look, look in the description box. It's contact at anchoredknowledge.com. Contact at anchoredknowledge.com. 
Okay. It's in the chat box. Jacob Taylor says, excited for the next stream. We'll try to contribute more next time. Wasn't ready this time. Thank you for the stream. You're welcome. I wasn't ready either. So I'm glad you guys are like getting something from all of this. You know, I was a little thrown around after that family session. Um, and yes, you're welcome. Doritos Locos Tacos. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Citizen King. You've really been, you've really been such a great support. Thank you, Cherries. I love you guys. Um, I say that every live chat. Now, tomorrow's summit that's coming up with Citizen King, um, I will try my best to like get some snippets from that and post it on this channel so you can see what I'll be talking about. Uh, it may be beneficial to you to understand suicide and the warning signs of potential suicide, uh, suicidal thoughts, I should say. And uh, I'll try to find some way to get you guys that information. Love you guys so much. Have a great Friday. Thank you for waiting on me tonight to get here. Um, I will see all of you in the next chat. But I also have a video coming up on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Love you. Good night.